In these screencasts, I preview basics of product costing that are covered in greater detail when job order costing and process costing are presented later on. Product costing is the process of determining the valuation of inventory and cost of goods sold. It involves a number of steps and decision, which include determining the gap cost of inventory, cost accumulation, allocation, and cost flow, methods of cost accumulation, in particular job order costing and process costing, overhead, and cost allocation. Gap costing is used in the preparation of financial statements. However, gap costs are not correct in some circumstances, and it is important to understand how gap costs are created in order to be able to recognize situations where gap may not measure relevant costs. Gap rules determine raw materials, work in process, finished goods, and cost of goods sold valuations. Unfortunately, product cost distortions affect the valuations placed by gap. For example, gap excludes some incremental and opportunity costs. Product costs may include irrelevant sunk costs. Gap may result in incorrectly measured shared or allocated costs. Cost systems provide a structure for the collection of cost data. Commonly used systems are job order costing and process costing. Job order costing is used when it makes sense to cost individual items. For example, the production of an airliner, such as the 787. Process costing is used when products are made in continuous batches, such as, say, computer chips. This journal entry shows the recording of raw material costs and the accumulation of raw material costs in an inventory account. Note the debit to raw materials inventory. The process of recording raw materials also applies to purchase parts such as those used in modern supply chains. For example, Boeing purchases large 787 components that are subcontracted out and then added to work in process inventory. Here is the accounting for the transfer of raw materials to work in process. Notice the credit to raw materials and the debit to the work in process account. Similarly, we could add labor to work in process by debiting work in process account and crediting something like wages payable. Overhead is treated somewhat differently. In order to better understand and control overhead costs, the elements of overhead, such as the depreciation on manufacturing equipment, are often accumulated in an overhead control account before the costs are assigned to work in process. So, for example, the depreciation on the truck is added to the overhead control account rather than added directly to work in process. This shows the transfer of overhead costs to a particular work in process account. Notice once again that the transfer in cost is accomplished by a credit to the overhead control and a debit to the work in process account. When an item is completed, the costs are moved from work in process to finished goods. So, for example, when a 787 is completed, The accumulated work in process costs are credited to the work in process and debited to the finished goods account. When items are sold, the cost of the inventory is recognized on the income statement, and this is done once again with a credit to the finished goods account and a debit to the income summary account.